partial reflection. So some surfaces are partially reflecting. We see, we see some examples here where the reflection from the surface of water uh, and from the surface of the glass is uh, partially uh, reflecting but partially transmitting. So uh, we can see some of the riverbed uh, bottom, some of the logs on the bottom. With this um, train on one side, we see a strong reflection of the sun. On the other side, we can see in through the window, you can see the hat of the guy driving the train. So the reflection that you get from a material which uh, is at least partially uh, transmitting uh, the light uh, is determined by the reflection coefficient. So the reflection coefficient is simply the percentage of the incident light that is reflected at the surface. And that reflection coefficient uh, depends on the materials of the interface, what's on each side of the interface, for example, air and glass. And it also depends on the angle that the light uh, comes in at. Well, let's start with just the uh, effect of the materials. So at a uh, zero degree uh, head-on uh, angle of incidence, uh, here are some values for the reflection coefficient. So light uh, striking water from air is about 2% reflected. And you see that uh, vice versa when uh, light is coming out of water and goes into air uh, at the interface, there's about 2% reflected back into the water. So the, this coefficient does not depend on which side uh, the light is traveling, whether it's air going into water or water going into air. Uh, other uh, materials are more reflective, like uh, silver is highly reflective, about 90% for the reflection coefficient. Uh, Air to glass is more reflecting uh, than um, air to water, about twice as much to 4%, uh, and, and so forth. So you can list a number of different um, types of materials. Now, when you look into a window, uh, like you see in this, in this photo, on the top part, we see a, a strong reflection of the sky, and we don't see inside of this uh, shop. Uh, now what's happening here is that uh, even though only about 4% of the light coming from the outside is reflected, because this part of the store, uh, the interior is so dark, the reflection uh, overwhelms uh, the transmitted light from the inside. Uh, on this lower part of the window, uh, this part of the interior of the bookstore is bright, and so uh, we have much more light coming from the interior, and that uh, overwhelms the reflection, so we don't see uh, much of the reflection uh, because we're seeing so much more light uh, transmitted from the interior. We have a similar effect when you have a one-way mirror. You can have one room that is bright and have a big uh, piece of glass which appears as if it's a mirror, but on the other side you have a dark observation room. Um, and here's uh, an example of an art piece that uh, uses this principle. So uh, here we're in this room and we see what appears to be a large mirror on the wall of the room. So uh, my friend John Clapp here is walking to uh, uh, end of the room. He's turning a corner and uh, there is a regular mirror at the end of the hallway there. So he's around here. He's turned another corner. He's walking down a long hallway to another mirror. At the end of the hallway, he's going to turn the corner again. And here comes the most interesting part. So he's walking and now he turns and uh, you see that he is located on the other side of what is actually a large piece of glass. He's in a very dark room there and so he can see us on the outside 
uh, but uh, on the other side where it's bright, uh, to us the glass looks as if it's a mirror. He's now uh, walking back out, he's going down the hallway, uh, coming out, he's almost back to where we started, and uh, you see on the right here uh, is what we thought was a mirror. And cut. So the now another effect of uh, on the reflection coefficient is the angle. So when angle is such that it's a small angle, the light is coming uh, almost head on. Uh, we tend to have a weaker reflection compared to when it's a large angle. So the light is uh, hitting at a glancing uh, angle to the surface then uh, we tend to have a strong reflection. And this dependence of uh, the reflection coefficient on angle is sometimes called the Fresnel effect because it's uh, come from the Fresnel equations of optics. We see this effect in this uh, photo. The, uh, in the distance, there's a strong reflection of the light from the sky uh, on the um, surface of the water because that light is um, reflected at a large angle. Uh, again, the law of specular uh, reflection tells us that's the angle it's being reflected from, and uh, so we have a strong reflection from the light in the distance. Uh, on the other hand, in the f uh, foreground, it's a relatively weak reflection of the light from the sky, and in fact it's so weak we can easily see uh, into the water and see the rocks in the bottom of the lake. Here's a graph which uh, shows you the um, reflection coefficient as a function of angle. So when we start at small angles, uh, it's only about 2% uh, for um, water and air, and it rises uh, not very much until around uh, 60 degrees, and then it, and then it rises uh, rather rapidly. And for other uh, materials such as uh, air and glass, uh, it's a similar curve, just the numbers are a little different. Uh, here you see the Fresnel effect on uh, glass, some parts where we're seeing uh, through the glass and some parts where we see a strong uh, reflection. Now we can ask, uh, if you have a reflecting surface such as a mirror, uh, do you cast a shadow on the mirror. And uh, since we've been talking about partially reflecting surfaces, uh, can you cast a shadow on water? And does it make a difference whether it's clear or murky or choppy, uh, so forth? Well, the answer to the question of can you cast a shadow on a mirror is no, you do not cast a shadow on a mirror. A mirror um, reflects an image, but it does not reflect uh, or you don't have a shadow on the mirror. Now when you, if you try this at home, you might notice a, what seems to be a shadow, but what you're actually probably seeing is any uh, diffuse reflection coming from any dirt um, or fingerprints which are on the mirror. But if you have a completely clean uh, mirror, then you will not see a shadow on the mirror, as you see here where I've taken this, this photograph and you see the cast shadow does not appear in the mirror. Uh, sim similarly with um, water, uh, there are situations where you see a shadow and sometimes you don't see a shadow. So here uh, when we have this clear water, uh, we don't have a shadow on the surface of the water. Uh, we do see a shadow um, at the bottom of the pool. Uh, on the other hand, in this uh, photo where it's murky water, we very clearly see a shadow on the surface of the water. Uh, here's uh, some photos I took in the backyard. Uh, this first bucket has uh, clean, clear water, and there is uh, no shadow on the surface of the water. The cast shadow you're seeing extends down to the uh, bottom of the bucket, and uh, in this case, you see a very uh, weak uh, reflection from this uh, clean water. 
On the other hand, this uh, murky, muddy water uh, has a rather strong reflection. You, in fact, see a, a highlight. Uh, what you're seeing here is the reflection of the uh, top rim of the bucket, and there is a significant uh, cast shadow on the surface of the uh, water as well. Uh, if you look carefully at the um, bucket with the clean water, you see that the shadow is actually bent because uh, light is bent by refraction when it enters um, the water, and we have a similar bending of the shadow. We'll uh, talk more about refraction in uh, some other tutorials. We can compare this with uh, having milky water as opposed to that that murky, muddy water. Uh, with milky water, we have a more diffuse cast shadow because we have a subsurface uh, scattering. In fact, it um, has something of a blue edge. And uh, as we saw with the clear water, there's um, not much reflection. You don't see a uh, reflection of uh, my cat's face in the water. Uh, and uh, same thing we saw with the um, other photo of the muddy water, a strong um, cast shadow, sharp edge, a strong uh, reflection of the sides of the bucket. The smoothness of the water also affects uh, the reflection that we get and the shadows that we get. So uh, smoother water tends to be more of a mirror reflection. Uh, choppy water is more of a diffuse reflection uh, with uh, stronger shadows. So in uh, summary, uh, reflection coefficient is the percentage of the incident light reflected at the surface. Uh, the reflection coefficient depends on the materials um, of the interface and the angle of incidence of the light. Uh, glass and water uh, look transparent or reflective depending on the relative brightness. So when we look uh, through a window, uh, sometimes we see right through and sometimes we see a reflection in the window depending on the brightness on uh, each side of the window. The reflection coefficient increases as the incident angle of the light increases. That was the Fresnel effect. And then uh, shadows and reflections on water uh, depend on the surface's clarity and smoothness.